Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host Ashutosh Garg and today I'm delighted to welcome an accomplished professional Mr. Simba Rashe Maka Hamadze from UAE. He's originally from Zimbabwe. Simba, welcome to the show. Thank you so much uh, Ashutosh. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Simba is the founder of All Things IP Africa, which is uh, an organization that handles intellectual property. He's also a principal consultant for Palladium IP Consultants. So let's talk intellectual property today. Um, tell me about uh, the work that you are doing. Uh, thank you so much, Ashtosh. So I'll probably start with uh, All Things IP Africa. Uh, which is a platform that gives the global market direct access to lawyers across the continent. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when um, I was practicing in Africa, and of course, then coming here into the Middle East, uh, I noticed the, the need for accessibility of uh, lawyers and IP practitioners like myself in the African continent. Mm -hmm. And um, going on Google right now to just search uh, for any African country, and of course, to access a lawyer is not that simple. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea behind the, the platform is to make sure that the, the global market has direct access to legal practitioners uh, across okay. the African continent. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think you understand what uh, COVID has done in terms of uh, you know budgets uh, across the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the platform also aims to uh, cutting the, the budget and the costs for protecting IP and accessing legal practitioners mm. across the continent. And we're looking at um, cost cutting between 40 to 60%. Mm -hmm. So, which is definitely a plus for mm. the global market to come into the continent. And what are some of the intellectual property challenges that are being faced by brands in, in Africa? Uh, well, I'll say, uh, besides the issue of accessibility that I've mentioned, um, the main issue from a, a, a practitioner point of view is that, I mean, we, we are all aware that uh, Africa is the next big thing. Um, and uh, by virtue of it being the next big thing, uh, most businesses are heading to, to the continent. Correct. And uh, be, before you get into any space to, to do business, there is one important professional that you need to, mm -hmm. uh, to get access to. That's a lawyer. And in this case, an intellectual property lawyer hmm. for the purposes of protecting your brands within the continent before you even right. venture into the continent. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of the challenge uh, that you have rightfully mentioned, uh, mostly we are looking at uh, enforcement of intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Having your trademarks registered, having your patents registered, having your industrial designs uh, registered, how then do you enforce um, uh, intellectual property in the continent mm -hmm. um, and you know for most of our audience uh, they they have a simplified uh, approach or understanding of mm -hmm. Africa mm -hmm. but this is a continent of more than 1.3 billion people yep. and uh, 55 countries mm -hmm. uh, all of which have got different um, legal systems mm -hmm. so that's where the, the, the challenge comes in in terms of making sure that that intellectual property that you've protected in the continent is enforced and um, it's not that the systems are not there. Mm -hmm. uh, the systems are there. And the main issue is then to have resident professionals within specific jurisdictions that you are mm -hmm. working in to make sure that they will assist you uh, with the enforcement of intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So that's the main challenge. But of course, there is a solution to that in the form of resident practitioners mm -hmm. who can uh, handhold um, clients who can handhold our global market into the systems of the African mm. continent. Mm. And with 55 different countries, with so many differences in the legislation across multiple countries, what are some of your challenges as you support and protect your clients? Well, I mean, in terms of the, the number of countries, um, obviously, from a client's point of view, the most important uh, consideration is the issue of cost. Mm -hmm. uh, budget-related issues. So as you might be aware, uh, intellectual property protection is territorial, which means um, protecting in one country doesn't mean that you're protecting in another country. Correct. So in that case, um, the, the first thought will be 
Mm -hmm. uh, for 55 countries, you need to have um, 55 applications, wow. which is, however, not the case uh, for Africa because we've got uh, two regional bodies um, in Africa, the African Intellectual Property Organization, uh, mm -hmm. or WAPI, uh, in short, uh, that has got 17 member states. Mm -hmm. And uh, the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, um, the short form is ARIPO, mm -hmm. which has got 22 member states. Mm -hmm. So those um, two regional bodies allows um, allow a client to get access to about 39 African countries, mm -hmm. um, which is a plus in terms of uh, protecting intellectual property uh, in Africa. Mm. And uh, what you're therefore saying is that these two organizations can then uh, support or protect uh, intellectual property across the entire continent. Well, I mean, if you can cover 75% of the continent, yep. then... Um, based on your market, market approach, uh, that's a huge advantage. And mm -hmm. obviously those uh, organizations, um, intergovernmental organizations, and mm -hmm. they put a more administrative role in terms of uh, protection of uh, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. The issue around management and enforcement of intellectual property within the continent comes back again to uh, the resident practitioners or the resident lawyers that we are giving access uh, to the global market through the all things IP Africa. Mm -hmm. Tell me also a little bit about the judicial system uh, in Africa. And I, I know it's a silly question because there are so many different countries. But if there is a dispute in one country, what is the process that uh, the intellectual property owner needs to follow? So um, that's an interesting question. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle it from uh, on the basis of the experience that we have had with uh, yeah. clients, both from the Middle East and, of course, uh, most importantly, from India. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are working with the different um, corporates, mainly in the pharmaceutical space. Mm -hmm. And um, the main challenge uh, in Africa, like I said, is enforcement. And when you look at enforcement, it, uh, it involves different stakeholders, mm. um, the, 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 the law enforcement agents, um, the, the practitioners, uh, the customs uh, stakeholders, and, and the judicial, like you mentioned. And um, the, when it comes to, to, to Africa, the judiciary is, is very critical in terms of uh, enforcement of intellectual property. However, the levels of uh, awareness and experience in tackling uh, intellectual property matters in courts mm. uh, is not um, at the best or uh, I would say it's not at the level that we would want it to be. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. I mean, coming from India, I know that the legal system is so slow. You could be sitting here for exactly. years and years and years trying to get justice. But at least in, in you know, when you talk 1.3 billion people of Africa and 1.4 billion people in India, the 1.4 billion people is one country. The 1.3 billion people in Africa are 55 countries. So it must be a nightmare interesting. If, my, if my intellectual property has been violated. So the interesting part, uh, Ashosh, is that, uh, you know, intellectual property protection um, is not generally a, a random fit. It's, it's market driven. Mm. It's a business that intends to, uh, you know, venture into the African continent. Obviously, you've got your target market mm. or your target countries. Mm. So your intellectual property protection strategy is guided by those countries. So in most cases, uh, our clients won't need to worry about the whole continent as in uh, all the 55 countries. Mm -hmm. So we build strategies based on the uh, market approach. Mm. Um, the client, for example, a client wants to be uh, basically in Southern Africa only, or they are targeting what they would consider as the uh, top 10 mm -hmm. uh, economies and stuff like that. So you find that the strategy is actually based on that mm -hmm. instead of being based on the 55 uh, countries on the continent. Very interesting. And for my viewers and listeners, uh, what is the difference between trademark and copyright? So that, that's an interesting question that we've always had mm. um, for a very, very long time. Um, so I'll differentiate these two IP titles uh, by definition and, of course, how mm. uh, they are infringed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. 
So a trademark can either be a name or a sign or a logo or a combination of both. That saves the purposes of differentiating the goods and services mm -hmm. from one uh, provider from another. That's a trademark. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, it's it's a sign that helps the clientele to differentiate or to select uh, their providers, mm. right? And then when we, it comes to copyright, I would differentiate a trademark uh, from copyright on the basis of definition. Mm -hmm. Like the word says uh, copyright, the right to copy, mm. right? So when it comes to copyright, now we are looking at the protection of literally and artistic works, mm. uh, your books, your music, your movies, your, your software, and then that brings us to an interesting issue where we have heard of trademark piracy mm. uh, and stuff like that, which is not correct because piracy um, doesn't happen to trademarks. What happens to trademark is counterfeit. I see. So a counterfeit is a fake product or a product that is not original. Mm. So when you infringe on a trademark, you are creating that counterfeit or you are creating something that bears a brand name, a logo or a trademark that is similar or confusingly similar to an existing mm -hmm. one. Then when you're talking about piracy, you are infringing a copyright protected work by a badge of reproducing. Right. So in this case, you are reproducing identical copies of a certain work, mm. identical copies of a movie, identical copies of a book, mm. um, and uh, identical copies of uh, photos or images. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best way to differentiate these two. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, in terms of um, protection uh, terms as well, a trademark is uh, normally protected for a period of 10 years, and um, it's renewed for, for, for similar periods. Then uh, when it comes to copyright, um, the term of protection is normally the life of the author mm -hmm. plus um, 50 years, that's for the UAE, and uh, quite a number of jurisdictions as well, and plus 60 years for India, which means uh, when an author or a creator mm -hmm. of a copyright protected work dies, we then count 50 years from okay. um, the year that they die. Okay. Well, that's great news for me personally because I'm a published author of eight books. So I know I can oh. be protected. Thank you. But Wonderful. moving on, uh, Simba, um, the world is moving towards startups, entrepreneurs, founders. How do you know, founders take a call on protecting their IP across different countries? I mean, it's such an expensive process. So from, from a practitioner point of view, um, I definitely wouldn't say uh, IP protection is, uh, is an expensive process mm -hmm. in view of the risks and costs that are associated with not protecting intellectual right. property. Uh, when you look at the, the, the world, Ashtosh, it's no longer about tangibles, mm. it's about intangibles. The, 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 the world is no longer driven by mm. physical capital. Mm. It's being driven by knowledge, and that knowledge is secured and protected through intellectual property. Hmm. So for, for, for startups, ignoring intellectual property uh, is, is for me the worst decision that they, hmm. they, they can make uh, and not, not just consider costs. Now, like I said, intellectual property is market driven. Hmm. And um, when you are protecting your intellectual property, you are not simply protecting in the world. Mm -hmm. You are protecting in your market of interest. Mm. So there are different ways of doing that. If you are focusing on the Indian market, you can simply register a trademark or mm. register your patent for your invention in mm. India. Um, then if you are looking at the, uh, for example, the European market, uh, you can actually do one application that covers the 27 countries of the EU. Mm. You are not doing 27 applications. And uh, at a global level, you can actually do a single application uh, that covers 128 countries under the uh, Madrid International System of Protection okay. Trademarks. Mm -hmm. uh, and for inventions, for patents as well, we've got the Patent Corporation Treaty, uh, which allows uh, you know, an applicant to protect in more than 150 jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So, however, I mean, uh, for startups, uh, it's very rare in my experience to find startups that are looking at um, that kind of protection that is so fast, mm -hmm. mainly 
uh, they are focusing in their immediate markets, which makes it uh, significantly cheaper to do that. Very interesting. Very interesting. So now let me move to your other organization, which is Pallad- Palladium IP Consultants. Tell me about the work you do here. So basically, Palladium is a is a UAE company which is focusing on uh, providing intellectual property services mm-hmm. um, as well as advisory and consulting to local and international clients within the UAE and of course the the Middle East. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the focus mainly, uh, which differentiates it from uh, all things IP Africa, which is uh, mainly focusing on the African continent and of course assisting the, the the global market to get into the African continent. And the work you're doing is very similar to all things IP. It's um it's slightly different uh in the sense of uh, number one uh, the the coverage and uh, number two the the services that we we are offering uh. We, we are looking at, besides the protection of IP, we are looking mm-hmm. at issues around advisory and consulting, policy-related issues, uh, internal procedures, uh, IP management for, for corporates, mm-hmm. and of course, intellectual proper training, uh, both uh, for, for executives, for management, for um, uh, you know, board members. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at um, the other end of mm-hmm. uh, intellectual property mostly, mm-hmm. which is not just the protection, but uh, the commercial side of things where we are looking at how, uh, you know, individuals and corporates can make money out of their intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So one more question for you. Uh, if someone finds that their IP has been violated, what is the recourse? So when it comes to, you know, violation of uh, intellectual property mm-hmm. and or infringement of um, intellectual property, mm-hmm. the, the starting point is the protection. Like I said, uh, if you have got your intellectual property protection, mm-hmm. a, a recourse becomes uh, more or less simplified mm-hmm. than seeking recourse without protection. So I'll give you a, a practical example. If you do have your trademark registered, and then you see uh, someone within a market uh, selling goods, mm. carrying a trademark that is similar uh, or identical to yours, or mm. possibly confusingly similar to yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, the basis of your protection is your registration, and you'll be able to stop mm. um, the, 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 the infringer from using that, uh, that trademark. And um, in most cases, the starting point is a cease and desist letter, where we are simply uh, telling them to stop. Um, on the basis of our registration. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are other options for recourse, uh, suing uh, for infringement, uh, you've got um, court injunctions and, uh, and court orders to, to stop uh, that infringement from happening. And above all, uh, you can also claim damages on um, lost revenue uh, out of that infringement. Okay, okay. So and technically, it's, it's, it's protection of an asset. Uh, like I said, intellectual property, mm-hmm. uh, it's an asset. The only difference uh, from land or buildings is that it's intangible. Wonderful, wonderful. And my last question to you, Simba, and this is for the many people who will listen to us. Some of them will probably also have interest in doing business in Africa. What would you say are three lessons Um people should keep in mind when they're looking about or they're thinking about their IP based on all your experience? So what I will do, Ashtosh, I will talk about um, three things from a a, a startup point of view. Mm -hmm. um, And obviously from from an African point of view. Yeah. Um, I'll start with the the African point of view. Uh, For most um, of our clients, Africa is big. Mm -hmm. 55 countries yeah but it's not one country it's mm-hmm. a huge continent with huge potential and it's the next big thing okay. um so the lesson is don't get into that continent without uh, protecting your ip mm. enforcement would be very difficult without yeah. protection yeah the so first things first a uh, protection of ip yeah. is very important all the systems and the mechanisms that are the mechanisms that are there for enforcement Correct. will be able to help you with protection. Mm. And then for, for startups, like I said, the worst decision that a startup can make is to ignore mm. um, intellectual property. Mm. Because like, like, like I said, is the according to Mark Yeti, is the oil of the 21st century. Yeah. So if you don't secure that, 
Uh, you really don't don't mean business. And from a capital raising point of view, again, for startups, the biggest lesson is venture capital firms, funders, angel investors, mm. they go where there is intellectual property protection. Mm. There's no uh, intellectual property protection. They don't come there. Wonderful. Yeah, well said. So on that note, uh, and your excellent advice of don't enter Africa, for that matter, any country, without protecting one's IP. And for startups, you told us, don't ignore your intellectual property because that's going to be very, very valuable in future. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for explaining so many different nuances of uh, intellectual property, about trademarks, copyrights, about how things function in the next big market of the world, which is Africa. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you so much, Astros. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.